Thank you. Senator, Senator Portman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and Dr. Chu, thank you for being before the committee again and for working with, uh, with me and other members of the committee on some important projects. Uh, I like some things in the budget. Um, one is energy efficiency, as Senator Shaheen has just talked about, and with buildings using about 40 percent of the energy in this country, I think um, what you're talking about there is consistent with the legislation which, as you may know, was introduced in the House, a companion bill yesterday. So we're hopeful that S-1000 can make its way to the floor. Um, I appreciate the support of the ranking member and the chair on that as well. Um, I'm concerned about um, some other aspects of the of, of the budget, but let me focus on something else positive, which is the small modular reactor licensing technical support program. You've funded that at 65 million bucks. And uh, these SMRs are really, I think, an exciting innovation and, as you know, have safety advantages as well as economic advantages. Um, I know that uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has just licensed a plant and another one coming uh, with larger reactors, but it seems to me that this is a good investment and something that will be better, very beneficial to energy mix going forward, so I, I thank you for that. Um, with regard to uh, carbon capture technologies, I don't know if you've had this question from other colleagues, and I apologize if I'm repeating something here, but the CCS programs, um, I think, still are lacking direction in this budget. I don't think there's a pathway here as to how long and how much it's going to cost to be able to develop um, carbon capture technologies. Uh, I would like to see uh, the budget laid out, but in the absence of that, um, I, I would hope that the department would do so. I, I did introduce an amendment last year that would require the department to assess how successful the CCS programs have been and how much time and what the cost would be to get them to the commercial level. And uh, Senator Shaheen, again, is, uh, was part of that in adding uh, an assessment of what the, some of the barriers are for large carbon capture and, and storage. So my question to you there would be, you know, what what is the pathway and what can the department give us in terms of information as to what your scientists believe is the way to move to uh, commercially viable demonstration projects? Sure. Um, first, the carbon capture technologies that are being tested today, uh, and I'll divide them into two categories. This is uh, you know, after combustion, uh, you capture the carbon. Uh, they're uh, MEA-type technologies or chilled ammonia-type technologies. Uh, those are being pilot tested uh, in a sense. They're, by and large, in the commercial sector. Uh, we feel that we would like to develop uh, less expensive means uh, because if you make, if you put in an estimate of how much it would increase the electricity bills, we think that this would not uh, this would not spur, uh, not in the United States, but it would not spur China or India into using these technologies. So we, we would like to improve them. We think there are potential ways of improving them. One of the potential ways is to, but, but these are very large, sur high surface areas. So we're investing a lot of research to, to decrease the size of these capture stacks. Uh, totally different ways of doing it. So instead of that being absorbed in certain material, you can use small particulate matter at the nanoscale we're, so we're investing a lot in the research in that. We're investing in ways of, um, another way is to separate uh, oxygen from nitrogen. Dr. Dr. Chu, I guess what, what I would ask, this is the danger of having someone who actually knows something about science testifying. Okay, um, I'll, I'll try to suppress um, it. I guess I would ask if you're, if, if you're, if you're willing is, uh, I'll submit a question for the sure. record, and um, I know a lot of members of the committee would be interested in your response, both on the specific, you know, uh, technological, improvements that you would recommend, but also just what what the department sees as the pathway forward here. And um, I don't see it in the budget again. I think I think it would okay. be very valuable that, to the committee. Yeah. In it's short, very brief time, I say the path forward is is to take advantage of the industry's interest on the piloting side in the carbon capture utilization and sequestration. Yeah. We we want it to be cost effective. Uh, it seems to me that there is an opportunity here and um, we're not taking advantage of it. Um, with regard to um, uranium enrichment, uh, I appreciate the fact that in the budget you do talk about the need for us to have a domestic source and, in fact, provide in the uh, defense nuclear nonproliferation account $150 million for uh, domestic uranium enrichment uh, development uh, demonstration research. You know, I've talked about this a number of times before. Um, I, I was interesting you included under NSA rather than uh, the nuclear energy account because uh, I think it, it would also be appropriate under the nuclear energy account. Is there a reason for that? 
Uh, no, that was uh, signed by uh, people more like you than me. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> no, I, I, I think that. Down there. <laughs> Pardon? No, I, I see what you're saying. Um, no, I, I'm just saying that uh, uh, you had to park somewhere. It was certainly appropriate to put it in, in an NSA budget. And, and um, Okay. Well, we'd be very interested in. in um, working with you on that. And I do think there's some appropriators who are, are particularly interested in knowing which account it's going to come out of and, right. and, and where it's coming from. I think, uh, uh, you know, a conditional loan guarantee would be a far better solution. But given where we are and needing to have a domestic source of enriched uranium, um, I think it's important that we move forward. And, and the more information, the better. Um, with regard to enriched uranium, if you could just talk for a moment about why you think it's so important. Uh, obviously, we need it for our nuclear power plants. At one point, we had a uh, uh, a majority of the enriched uranium in the world being produced by the United States. Um, I think we're down to um, about 25 percent of the world's supply of enriched uranium now. And um, maybe a place to start is, you know, where do we get it now in that we aren't producing nearly as much as we used to? Well, there are two parts to this. One is the uh, military side, the security side. We have, we have uh, uh, international treaties uh, which we uh, want to abide by a non-proliferation treaty, which says that the uranium used in nuclear security for nuclear security purposes actually has to be indigenous to that country. It, it's a very wide treaty because you don't want uh, one country to be using technology of another country to enrich uranium that they can turn into uh, right. weapons. So, um, so we need our own indigenous source of uranium for uh, our to. to, to maintain our stockpile, uh, uh, also the uranium that we need to produce tritium uh, for that stockpile. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's a larger issue about the civilian uh, nuclear side, um, um, much larger amounts of uranium. Uh, we think that if the United States, certainly the United States will be a player, the United States is well respected for its safety record, for its care, and, and it is the way it handles its own civilian nuclear industry and for the technologies that it has developed, uh, uh, companies like GE Westinghouse. Um, w it would also benefit if we had a, a homegrown uh, new technology for enriching uranium uh, for, again, so that we can offer for sale to other countries, to other developing countries, you know, France is a player in this, Russia is a player in this. We think that um, if the United States is a supplier of this uranium, uh, that we could have a moderating effect, again, on non-proliferation issues. Right. So, so it's, it's for that reason as well. In essence, discouraging uh, emerging economies from developing their own enrichment capabilities, saying that right. the, the fuel they need for a peaceful nuclear power um, facility can come from the United States. It'll be a stable, affordable supply of, uh, through domestic that's, sources. That's correct. In fact, if, if you put yourselves in the shoes of another country who might want to have, a nu have nuclear technology, they would want to see several suppliers. Mm -hmm. So they would not be holding to one or two. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we also feel that the United States in its, uh, can lead by example of, of, of uh, helping do what it we can do in order to uh, decrease the risks of proliferation. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it, it's the whole nuclear supply issue that we will be a player no matter what, but it, it would certainly benefit from that respect as well. My time is up, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. Thanks, uh, Mr. Chairman, for giving uh, Senator, me a, a little time there, but I appreciate the follow-up, and we'll, we'll follow up. Okay. Senator Sanders. Uh, 